The Criterion flash sale has been and gone, and I have spent the last few days looking at all of the beautiful sale halls that I've seen posted on Facebook and Reddit and YouTube, and people got a lot of great films. But there were some films that I didn't see anyone get at all, and I must have seen about 40 or 50 haul photos at this point. I've picked seven of these films that I saw no one pick up, and I think these films definitely deserve attention from you. And for my fellow UK citizens, because I know people will ask this, all of these are Region A titles that you can't get on Region B criterions. However, if you do want to get these in the UK and you have a Region A player or a multi-region player, you can pick these up on eBay from Boutique Home Video. They import criterions from the US and they ship them from the UK. So when you buy them, you'll get them within a couple of days and you don't have to worry about customs charges or paying VAT on top of that. And just the tragedy that is international shipping when things just get sent in a measly bag and they of course get damaged. With all of that said, let's get on to the selection of films that I think are underrated, underseen and deserve your attention. This first one is an absolute cracker of a movie. It's Manila in the Claws of Light from Lino Broca. This is a movie from the Philippines, which is a country that I don't think a lot of people have seen many films from. And this is definitely one of the best that you can start with. It's from the 1970s and it tells the story of this young man who comes from a, a farming background and he moves into the city and he discovers that life is very tough if you don't already have a leg up in the city. At times it is very shocking and it reminds me a lot of Taxi Driver from Martin Scorsese, which interestingly enough, he helped restore this movie through the World Cinema Project Foundation and he features on this disc giving an introduction to the movie. I don't know if this was a direct influence on Taxi Driver because that came out the year after this was released but there are definitely some similarities and it would make a very good double bill. So the Criterion disc is definitely worth your attention and I'm just shocked no one picked this up during the sale. Speaking of gritty New York cinema I have Frownland from Ronald Bronstein. This is as independent and low budget as you can get for cinema, but don't let that put you off at all. This film is one of the best portrayals of social anxiety I have ever seen in a film. It really does make you uncomfortable watching this central character as he goes through these relationships that he has and searching for purpose, searching for work. If you're a fan of the Safdie Brothers movies like Uncut Gems and Good Time, this is one to check out. They were actually involved with the production, I, I believe, way back in 2007. And Josh Safdie is even on the special features talking to Ronald Bronstein about this film. So it's a fascinating package. And I would never have come across this movie if it weren't for the Criterion Collection. And I think many people have looked over this release because they don't know anything about it. So for those reasons, I have to recommend it. And I think if you're into independent cinema, it's absolutely something that you should give a chance. Next is a film that is an absolute masterpiece for me. And it is a film that is very well regarded, but it seems in recent times, I don't see many people talk about this movie and I didn't see anyone pick it up during the sale. It's Medium Cool from Haskell Wexler. That might not be a name you're familiar with, but Wexler was one of the greatest cinematographers of the period. He worked on so many brilliant movies, but he turned to directing for a few films, and this was one of them that really stood out. The filmmaking is a very interesting blend of documentary and fiction. So I'd say if you like the films of, say, Abbas Kiarostami, definitely check out Medium Cool. It follows the story of this young uh, cameraman who records um, incidents for the news and for selling to news reporters. Uh, but he discovers that a lot of his footage is being fed to the FBI without his knowledge. 
So this kind of sends him on a spiral of questioning his own purpose. And the backdrop to all of this is civil unrest and revolution in the United States. It was made in 1969. And a lot of the sequences are set amongst real life events. And the camera follows an actor through protests and all sorts of mobilization. So it really does lend a, a feeling of authenticity to this film. The late Robert Forster is great in this film. It's just a film that I can't take my eyes off from start to finish. And on the Criterion disc, it's sourced from a 4K restoration and the film looks very nice indeed. And it's a great package with the features that you get on this disc. So please do seek this one out in the future. The next film that I have to recommend to you is Le Corbeau from Henri-Georges Clouseau. Clouseau is one of my favorite French filmmakers and I did see a few people pick up The Wages of Fear and Diabolique in this sale. I didn't see anyone go for this. And this was recently upgraded to Blu-ray from a Criterion DVD in the last year or two. And I thought this was going to make a bigger splash when this was announced, uh, but it seems that it, it hasn't. I haven't seen many people talk about this one at all. It's a film from the early 1940s set in a French provincial town. And we follow the story of this doctor who is being sent these poison pen letters, accusing him of all sorts of bad things. And this sets the community against him. It creates an atmosphere of paranoia because no one knows who the raven is, the person that's sending these letters, trying to destroy the reputation of this doctor. Clouseau is often compared to Alfred Hitchcock in his filmmaking style. And while they're not exact comparisons, I do think there is an obvious uh, link to make between the filmmakers. So if you enjoy a Hitchcock movie, please check out the movies of Clouseau because they are very suspenseful. And you know, the craft, the placing of the camera is absolutely pinpoint perfect. This story in particular has very interesting um, connotations when viewed from a modern lens, because in, in recent times, the conversation about uh, cancel culture and people's reputation being destroyed, perhaps without any evidence for it to be destroyed, is something that people are talking about today. The film looks beautiful on the 4K transfer on this disc. And there's also a great interview with the late Bertrand Tavernier, who talks about this movie and Clouseau. So yes, please do check this one out. It's absolutely great. Going back to the 1930s, one of the great filmmakers from the time was G.W. Pabst, and I have the film Kameradschaft. This film follows the story of a group of coal miners who are trapped in a mine that is on the border between France and Germany. So it then becomes a joint effort for both sides to help out and save these miners who are stuck in the mine. It's a real story of camaraderie and of putting aside differences for the greater good. And I think that's a story that resonates throughout human history. Uh, this is a great Blu-ray from Criterion with some great special features on here. And G.W. Pabst was one of the greatest filmmakers during the silent period and at the start of the sound period. And then for some reason, he just sort of fell off and people say his filmmaking just wasn't as good following the films of this period. So a very interesting filmmaker, one who probably struggled with the transition from silent cinema to sound cinema. Anyway, one to check out. I didn't see anyone pick this one up during the sale. Um, so yeah, please give it a shot in the future. Now for a documentary, I've got Ingrid Bergman in her own words. This is a film from Stieg Bjorkman. This is a documentary from 2015, looking at the life of Ingrid Bergman, one of my favorite actresses from the history of cinema. The documentary follows her life using some of her own writings that are narrated by Alicia Vikander. And she gives a great narration through this whole documentary. It's also pieced together with clips of her movies and uh, appearances in interviews, uh, photos, 
And there's also some new interviews with her children, including Isabella Rossellini. I really do think it's a beautiful documentary. And I think it's a bit unfairly treated by Criterion fans, because I've seen a few people say that this is the sort of thing that should appear as a special feature on another disc, which I think is unfair. This is its own film, and it's telling its own story. So please do check it out. I really do think it is a great documentary, especially if you're a fan of Ingrid Bergman. You know, it's just a no-brainer. The next film that I want to recommend is Le Clis from Michelangelo Antonioni. This is one where I know a lot of people are going to say, how can you say Antonioni is underrated? He won pretty much every major European award for filmmaking. This film and the other films in the trilogy, uh, La Ventura and La Notte, those are so very well regarded that how can I say they're underrated? This is one where maybe underrated is the wrong word, but I have to say that this film is underseen, particularly by modern audiences. I didn't see anyone pick this one up during the sale, which I think is an absolute crime. And yeah, I just want more people to at least give the films of Antonioni a shot, because I actually think they have a powerful message, and the themes of these movies in this trilogy are ones that are, I think, perhaps even more relevant today than they were in the 1960s. The story follows Monica Vitti's character as she goes from one lover to another, and that's really all I can say about the story, because Antonioni's films are quite loose on narrative and plot. They are more about the atmosphere and the visual aesthetics of these movies. His films of this period often frame young people, often lovers, in this environment of modern architecture and loneliness and expanses. And it's all meant to signify that perhaps we haven't caught up with our surroundings and the world we're in. There's a, a disconnect between the world we live in and the kind of people that we are. And that that is really troubling for humans because we don't know how to cope and we often end up acting irrationally. People often say Antonioni had a cynical viewpoint because they read that he was thinking that people will never adjust to the environment that they're in. Actually, I think from listening to him and some of the special features on this disc talk about how he was actually optimistic. He was hoping that we would reach that point. I actually think in today's environment, you can swap the modern architecture of these movies for the digital architecture and the, the worlds that we inhabit online and the disconnect between us and these digital environments is even more expansive than the disconnect between the people in these movies and the buildings and the surroundings that they're in. And so I think the themes of isolation, loneliness and frustration that are tackled in these movies are more relevant than ever. So please do consider this film and the films of Antonioni in your future Criterion purchases. But that is not all if you want some great Criterion recommendations. Just click the video on screen right now where you can find many other films to consider in the future. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.